Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and here I like to explore the world of fountain pens, ink, and paper. And today, it's fountain pen. You may recognize this as the Asvine V126, and that's because... This pen has been here before, but not in this color, and more importantly, not with this nib. So Asvine contacted me not that long ago and said, hey, would you like to review this pen? And I said, well, I really like that color, but I have reviewed the V126. Would you be willing to send one in a nib that I have never reviewed on the channel? And that is the Extra Fine. I've never reviewed an Extra Fine from Asvine here before, so I thought we'd fix that and take a look at the Extra Fine V126 today. Let's spin that camera and dive on in. All right, since I've reviewed this pen before, I am going to fly through some of the bigger details here right quick. First, cigar-shaped, vac-filling pen, that pilot-esque clip that works really well, has a nice springiness to it, has that ball end, goes over a fabric or a pen loop really easily. Asvine does a nice job on their trim. Asvine on that side and the name of the pen, V126, on the other side, of course, you've got a trim ring at the top where you have that domed finial, you have the trim ring here, and then you have another trim ring down at the twist knob. The pen uncaps in one and a quarter turns. Very, very handy if you're looking for a pen with a lot of ink capacity. Great in a meeting because the cap can go on and off very quickly. This is one of those pens. And I really do like this new teal color, and I think the gold trim looks very nice with that. I asked if there had been any other changes to the pen, and at the moment there have not been. So this is still very much that V126 that I reviewed a little while back, and that is a good thing because that pen has been a great workhorse of a pen. I've enjoyed it, been very reliable for me, and it's a really great first vac pen if you're looking for something to see if that's a good mechanism for you. Now with that cap off, it does post securely. You can kind of see how deeply, about halfway up the cap, but post securely. There is, of course, some back weightedness just because of the size of that cap, but I find that it is still then a balanced writer. It's also perfectly comfortable to write with unposted as it is a longer bodied pen. The pen can be completely disassembled, and I'll throw a photo up of what that looks like once you've done it. This is their typical number six screw-in nib unit, so you can replace this with other S-Vine nibs. If you're going to clean it, of course, the grip section unscrews from the barrel, and that makes that easy to wash out and service for regular cleaning. Of course, the nib unit also can unscrew, and you can clean that. There is an O-ring there to make sure that you don't have leakage problems. If you're one to want to fly with the pen, this does have that safety shut off valve. So when the knob is all the way down, this is closed and then that will prevent all the ink that is in the barrel from pushing out during those pressure changes. So that's handy. Of course, you also need to remember that if you want to write with it for an extended period of time, you will open this until that valve comes off of the feed so that more ink can go in and then you'll just close that back when you're done. Filling the pen is easy. Let me just open this up and kind of show you how it works and then we'll actually fill it up here in a second. But you just unscrew that, pull that up, and then as you push it down, it creates vacuum in here and it comes to this slightly wider opening right here. You hear that? That's the air rushing in as you moved back into the wider part of the barrel and then ink will fill up. I'll show you that here in just a second. Now you will notice here that there are flat sides right there. You can use the Asvine wrench to be able to open this up if you need to service that, but for a regular cleaning, you really don't have to remove that. You can just remove that grip section, unscrew that, and flush that out and clean it, let it dry out, and then refill your pen. Now we get to the nib, which for me in this particular review is my greatest interest because I have not used their extra fine nib before. I, I used to not like extra fine nibs, but I got several in a row here for review that were actually quite good and that I really enjoyed, and it's really changed my mind about extra fine nibs. You'll notice that it is well decorated. I think that's done nicely. It has a nice big E there for extra fine. You won't be able to forget what it is. You know, it amazes me that there are still pen makers, some of them really big name pen makers, that still haven't figured out that we all really do like to know what nib size we're looking at when we're looking at a pen. Then it has just their standard number six 
feed, which does a good job. All right, there we have the V1. Then we have similar shape but different size, the Platinum 3776. And then the Gravitas entry, also in teal. And the Hongdian N11. Here are the pins in their unposted length. And as I said, you can see here that it is a decently sized, full size I would say, a full size pin. And here are the pins in their posted lengths. All right, ink today is Rohrer and Klingner Verdigris. Very nice looking color. I think it'll suit this pin quite nicely. Again, you unscrew that knob, you pull out on that piston, and we lower that into the ink and press down. And voila, very nice fill on that pin. All right, let's see how that Asbine B126 writes. Paper today, by the way, is the pinning gear from Walmart. This is paper made in India. It's a dot pad. Really great everyday paper. And this is Rohrer and Klingner. And this is their Verdigris. Really nice looking ink. You know, for an extra and fine. That writes really nice and wet. Now I did just fill it, so uh, you know maybe day to day it's going to be a little drier than that once I've gotten past the initial wetness of a fresh fill, but that's quite good. I like it already. This is really writing quite nicely. Very similar, and that's not surprising, uh, to the extra fine that's in this Hongdian N11 that I really like. Feels slightly different and might be just a little bit broader of an extra fine. I would say this writes, it's a Western extra fine to fine. I believe that N11 writes a little bit thinner than this. There you go, a little word association game. You can see what I'm thinking about this spring. All right, let's do our speed test. See how the nib and feed keep up with the ink and the paper. I'm gonna do this in real time so that you can kind of gauge how well it is or is not holding up, all right? Oh, that's really quite good. I did see a little line there that was a little bit of a skip. This was uh, me, I think, as I just started out, not quite at the right angle. All of this through there, fantastic. All right, my first quick impressions of this extra fine nib are really good. I think I really, really like that one. That's just as good as that one in the Hongdian N11. Uh, maybe, again, a little bit broader, though that could be a mix of pen, paper, and ink. But I will say, not the thinnest of extra fines just by comparison. Here is this platinum. It is a soft fine. It is not actually a uh, an extra fine. And as you can see, wow, that was bad. It is significantly thinner. That's a Japanese fine. I just find that these Chinese fines write much closer to Western standards. So their extra fine is a lot like a Western extra fine, which makes it like a Japanese fine. Uh, so, uh, you know, kind of gauge it that way. But pin, really well made, well put together. I'm already uh, impressed with a lot of what Asvine is doing, and the V126 is one of the reasons I'm impressed with what Asvine is doing. So that was no surprise. That extra fine nib being yet another one that James turns out to really like, uh, a surprise, but not a surprise. I, I figured being as good as their medium and their fines have been that there was a good chance I would like it. But, you know, there's some great companies that put out some extra fines that I really don't like. And uh, so 
it's not a given, never a given. So yes, I like this pen. I think that it is a really good value as well. I think when you compare it to other pens in the price range, you really are getting a lot of bang for the buck. I have found that vac filling mechanism to be both functional as it ought to be and reliable in the V126 that I already had. So I've got some, some road test time with the model of pen, even though this particular pen is new that gives me confidence that this will go well. So what do you think? What's your experience been with their extra fine nibs specifically? Because I really looked at this more for the nib than anything. And what do you think about that new teal? I'm a fan of that. And what about the 126 overall? Good experience, bad experience, waiting to experience it. Share all of that in the comments below. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, for liking, for sharing this with somebody that might be interested in that pen. And God bless you, and have an awesome week.